this is the gym drive. So on the way to the gym, this is when I'm usually psyching myself up for the workout ahead. And uh, it's funny, it's bad weather outside. And this is a time where you usually get people coming up with excuses. It's too cold, can't get out and do shit. It's too dark in the morning. It's too wet. I couldn't get my cardio in. Bullshit, people are starting to become pretty darn fucking soft out there. So if I think back, and so I've shared this a little bit, uh, not too in depth on video, sometimes through some of my books, through some of the jobs and my upbringing that I had in Wales. Like when I was a kid and too young to get a real job, I still had to work. I had to get up early in the morning before school, before primary school, before high school, to help my dad on the farm. If I didn't get up at like 5 a.m. because I hadn't set my alarm, whatever, even as a young kid, my father would sneak into my room, he, he would lift up the end of the bed several feet up in the air and then drop it. So it scared the shit out of me. And I didn't like that. I hated waking up that way. So that allowed me to make sure that I was responsible for myself to get up in the morning, that I didn't have to rely upon anyone else. And then after a while, I didn't need an alarm. My own internal clock would get my ass up. So it becomes second nature. And then it didn't matter before school if I was tired, if it was cold, if it was snowing. If you didn't go out and help dad on the farm, or if you didn't go out and sometimes not help him, he's somewhere completely different on the farm, then animals die. Animals are your livelihood. That's what puts food on the table. And believe me, there wasn't that much money to go around to put food on the table. So it was a necessity. It wasn't something that you wanted to do. It was something that you had to do. You know, and uh, then it just become implemented within you. And further from that, you know, doing that from year, for years, I'd help dad do other things like sneak up to the quarry and go grab uh, some stones, some cement, uh, you know, because we'd be doing some side uh, jobs, some side hustles and stuff like that. Occasionally he'd take me poaching onto other people's lands. Uh, we'd go, uh, it wasn't like the traditional form of fishing. He would teach me how to tie with some binder twine, some st uh, string, a fork on the end of a stick. And about midnight or one o'clock in the morning, would go up, pissing down with rain or whatever, onto this land to uh, like some streams. And with a torch, we'd sh shine it onto some trout or something like that and stab these trout. And that was another way of putting food on our plate because we were short of money, you know, we didn't have that much. So you had to get creative. And like I said, it wasn't what you wanted to do, you did what you had to do. And by doing so, you do the shit that you don't always wanna do, which in this day and age, a lot of the time we make too many decisions. We don't wanna do shit that's too hard, it's too cold, it's too wet, etc. And then after that, other jobs came out of that that I needed to do to kind of make ends meet. I had to fend for myself. My dad wasn't gonna buy me a car, he wasn't gonna get me things, he wasn't gonna take me on holiday, neither was my mum, you know? They were very creative and they were very, very, very hard workers uh, to allow me to have a roof over my head and same later on with my sister. And I had so many jobs, unfortunately, a lot of them were outside and if you know anything about Wales, it's kind of like the weather that we're seeing here now in Boise. It's pissing down with rain, it's cold and it's kind of relentless. And uh, I had jobs as a teenager, like working on cars, as a panel beater, they'd call it. And uh, so I was, you know, sanding down cars, putting in filler, you know, cutting out the rust. Uh, getting sheet metal and uh, welding that back in and this is mostly outside and uh, I'd help on other people's farms as well cutting down nettles thistles usual yard work and uh, later on I was working on building sites I was also uh, helping you know, dad on other things like welding trailers to get uh, together uh, fixing cars because all of our cars were shit we didn't have enough money to have a decent car, so there's always need in fixing. And dad would usually buy a car that was a bit of a shaloppy, you'd call it. And uh, we used to have to try to put that thing together so it was workable. And uh, a lot of that, again, was after he'd finished work, after I'd finished school, I'm outside uh, helping him, you know? And what that did for me was it helped me 
like I hated it at the time. This wasn't something that I enjoyed. I absolutely hated it, but it molded me into what I am today. And that is to be a little, be disciplined for sure. Number one, be disciplined, wake up early, get your shit done. But number two, it allowed me to condition myself to environmental factors because look at it look at it today like we have air conditioning we have heating you know we have it in cars didn't have that in the cars that i bloody had when i was uh, growing up you know you'd have to scrape the inside of the windscreen the whole time as you're driving to work because it's so freaking cold and it's freezing on the inside and uh, you know i'm not the only one you know it's not like i had a hard life i didn't have a hard life there's people out there that had lives much harder than mine but as i go through the generations the ages I just see people getting softer, their estrogen is going higher, their testosterone's becoming lower. And uh, all they do is fucking whinge, moan. They whine about the environment being uh, controlling them as opposed to them controlling their environment. Now, if you wanna improve your physique, if you want to have a better lifestyle, if you want to become more disciplined with your nutritional protocol, it all comes, it all comes from a transcendence effect of these little tiny things. Getting up in the morning, not hitting that fucking snooze button. Making sure that you're doing things that you don't wanna do. If it's raining outside, like it is right now, go outside, do your fucking cardio. Don't do it in the gym, you know? Get comfortable being uncomfortable. Your skin is waterproof. You're not gonna fucking die. You'll be absolutely fine. So, these are the types of things that I like to listen to in my own head if I'm not listening to music to help me condition myself before my workout. If this workout is gonna get uncomfortable, cool, then I'm ready. You gotta get comfortable being uncomfortable. If you wanna find failure in life, it's only gonna help you become stronger. So when you go to the gym, you find failure that will allow you to get stronger. That's it.